Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Blow Daz. I'm Gaynor. I'm Office Blow Caden. Okay, a little bit of uh, criminal psychology. Channel's JCS Criminal Psychology. Great channel. Watched yep. a little bit of uh, a longer... They got some, some, someone actually sent me a message saying, check this channel out. Um, so I had a look at it. And uh, there's some long stuff on there. So I had a look at some of the longer stuff, uh, which is too long to do on this channel, I think. Yeah. Um, and it was really good. Very, very interesting. Um, it, was, it was basically people who have been arrested and it, what goes on in their mind, sort of thing, and uh, I don't know what the talk, how, how they're how talking, they what the, how they're behaving, all this kind of stuff, it's really good. Mm. Uh, so it's a good channel as well, so check it out yourself. Uh, this is The Legend of Jeff. Who's Jeff? Don't know, hmm. don't know anything about Find him, out, don't right? know who he is. He's got but no guess, shoes on anyway. Yeah, he's, he's in a cell, isn't he, like a in, interview room as such. Yeah, but interrogation room. Interrogation room, But they should yeah. give him something to cover the feet. No, you, you can't, you, you could do, you, you could give him socks. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but then you can't strangle yourself. Tie two of them together, and you've got long, Something long then, aren't you? No, you should, like those things you put over your feet, like when you're in surgery, over mm. your shoes, like shower no. caps. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, let's get, let's get into it. Jeff. Legend of Jeff. Am I under arrest? I'm for now. I'm under arrest. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain everything. But before I talk, before I explain myself to you, before we talk to each other, I need to read your rights, okay? What am I under arrest for? Well, like I said, I need to read your rights first. Obviously, the charge is robbery, okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain everything. I'm under you. arrest for robbery. You are, but let me read your rights real quick, okay? And then I'll explain it all to you. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Let me do that real fast. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff. Can you read with me? Just read in your head, okay? Before we ask you any questions, you must understand that what your rights are. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. Does that make sense? You've probably heard these before, haven't you? Does that make sense? Do you understand your rights? Do you understand your rights, Jeff? It's just going to be mute now, isn't it? It's just going to be awkward. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's... The first thing is you have the right to remain silent. Yeah. From, I'll take that right. Yeah. He's obviously like a druggie or... He's, he's, when he come, when he turned up, he sounded a bit drunk, didn't he? A he sounds, bit, like, yeah, he or, sounds like, or, yeah, he's, he's slurring high his or, words. Yeah, just when he went, am I under arrest for, you know, am I under arrest? The way he queried it, so I think he's in, he's in handcuffs in a cell. Yeah. Some sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> yes or no? Do you understand? Do you understand what I read you? Do you comprehend what I read you? Jeff, I'm just here to talk to you and figure out what happened and move you on out of here at least some of it. So you understand the rights I read to you. If you got something that says you didn't do this robbery, this is your chance to talk to us. <laughs> what was all that about? What was that? <laughs> you. <laughs> That was funny, that. <laughs> Good, that one. Do this robbery. This is your chance to talk to us. Okay, good cop. Why not? Uh, no, usually I'm the prick. You look like the prick. <laughs> this is Jeff. Jeff is a heroin addict and has been for the last 14 years. He is six foot five, weighs 153 pounds, and has now found himself in the unfortunate circumstance of being charged with armed robbery. This is in the state of Georgia, so if found guilty, they will render him the minimum term of 10 years without parole, up to the maximum term of life in prison. Jeff has been through the system multiple times over, and he will know that if indeed found guilty, his sentence will be considerably longer than the minimum 10 years due to his previous convictions. Long time. Jeff, do you understand your rights? Yes or no? I'm, I'm not asking if you want to talk to me at this point. I just wonder if you understand what I read to you. That's so am I under arrest? Yes, you're under arrest. I'm getting back to the cell. I don't talk to you, motherfuckers. Okay, there you go. You want to cope? Yeah. You go, Mill, pop it open or you need me to? Yeah. 
Jeff has become somewhat of a cult figure in the domain of interrogation footage. His recognition seems to have grown through his own popularity, as opposed to the notoriety of his crimes, like most others. Conveying the exact reasoning behind this can be tricky, as the interest in this character will no doubt vary by the individual. Yet we've found the most collective reason can be explained through a single pop culture reference. The anti-hero. While the concept is timeless, the actual term was created through the realm of modern cinema. There's a diverse number of characters passing through the decades that fit the criteria. Yet perhaps the most textbook example could be the protagonist from the 2003 feature Bad Santa, a middle-aged man simply known as Willie. This is a character that lies, cheats, steals, swears at children, drinks an inconceivable amount of alcohol, and is generally extremely unpleasant to every single person he comes across. So it's off his bloat does. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Wait. Look who's here, Jimmy. It's Santa. Oh, fucking right. Let's tell him what you want for Christmas. I'm on my fucking lunch break, okay? <laughs> On paper, this is an extremely unlikable individual, yet for some reason, we root for him while following his story. Anti-heroes are flawed, as are we. Their moral complexity mirrors our own, and just like us, they are learning and growing as they move along the path of life. Their mistakes make us think of our mistakes, and perhaps the reason we root for their redemption is the reflection of ourselves rooting for our own. So you might be curious about the contrast between the anti-hero and the villain. One we embrace and relate to, while the other we despise and detach from. Both are driven by selfish motivations, yet our emotional response differs between them. The reason for this, while not necessarily obvious, is a relatively simple formula. The anti-hero must have a glimmer of humanity alongside a noticeable vulnerability. This is what allows the viewer to truly connect with the character. It allows us to forgive them when they are unethical, but admire them when they are noble. It allows them to be angry, cowardly, and greedy, but also cheerful, brave, and empathetic. Who the fuck is Thurman? Is that you? Is your name Thurman? Yeah. <laughs> Thurman, Thurman. Yeah. <laughs> I've not seen this video. You don't, have you this don't film, watch no. Santa? No, that's have funny. Have you seen it? I've not seen this. Oh, I'm definitely going to watch it though, that looks funny. Jesus. With relation to Jeff, while many of us can't relate to the feeling of being addicted to heroin for well over a decade, we can certainly understand the feeling of sadness. While we may not be able to put ourselves directly in the shoes of an addict, we can somewhat relate to the adversity that comes with it, not to mention the incredible magnitude of the situation he is going through in this video. How he responds to this very moment is quite- He has got shoes on. He has? Yeah, you can oh, see yeah, that it's a different colour of his foot. He's got some around slipper, his foot. Yeah. Like little slippers. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's all I asked for. Yeah. <laughs> the situation he is going through in this video. How he responds to this very moment is quite literally the precursor to his entire future. He is at a crossroad moment in life, where on one side is the possibility of hope, and on the other side is the outright guarantee of despair. The long-term path he goes down will be the consequences of the short-term choices he makes, all of which have to be judged and decided on while going through the early stages of heroin withdrawal. I need methadone. You need methadone? Yeah, you need that methadone I don't have any. Do you have medication for it or, I mean, a prescription for it? Or? No. What do you need methadone for? Because I'm a fucking junkie and you guys, and I can't get no methadone. I'm going go, to go through withdrawal here in a minute. Where do you usually get your methadone from? I don't get it. I get heroin. How long you been using heroin? Long time, buddy. What are you trying to talk to me about here? Talk to you about what happened last night. <laughs> Look, here's the deal. Either you're in a bad, bad set of circumstances or you went and committed an armed robbery last night. Yeah, right? I'm in a shitty, uh, wrong place at the wrong time, obviously. I didn't commit no fucking armed robbery. All right, then let's talk about this. Let's, let's I don't, not have nothing, I don't talk to the police, man. I think it's in your best interest to. Man. How? I don't you're, talk you're to the police. Here, okay. I've been through the system, buddy. I know how I know it you works. Have. I know you have. You're yeah. not my friend. I'm not your friend. You're trying to fucking get me. Or you're no, trying I'm not to, trying to get All you. you're trying to get is some fucking stupid ass fucking confession and you're not going to get one. Jeff, I'm not going to get a confession out of you for nothing. Exactly, because and I didn't I'm do nothing. I'm not trying nothing. to get a confession out of you. Okay, I'm going to tell you, I didn't commit no armed robbery. 
And y'all ain't got no fucking evidence saying I did. Let me go. All you did is find me sitting in my buddy's house because my fucking buddy's dog's going to ape shit. I go outside. There are cops everywhere. And they spotlight me. They say, come here. I say, what's up? They search me. They ain't find nothing. What's Let up? Let me read this. No. Yes. Because I'm not going to sign it. You don't have to sign it. So let me read it for you. Okay? I'm not signing nothing. You don't have to sign it. Let me read it. You already read it to me earlier. I know we did, but I'm going to read it to you again. Thanks for the coat. You're welcome. Before we ask any questions, you must understand what your rights are. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, a lawyer will be provided for you. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to the lawyer. Do you understand the rights I've explained to you? No. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what happened last night. Plain and simple. Your, your side of the story. I'm not talking to you. I'm warning you. Uh, all right. This is I, what I, I don't understand. I, told you I know, but this is what I don't understand, well, Jeff. You were sitting there talking just like you were ready to sit here and tell me what happened last night, and then all of a sudden I read that to you and you screw it. I ain't talking to you. I want a lawyer. I don't understand that. What what Cause changed? Because I, cause I, in the, cause I told you what, I already told you what happened. You didn't. How didn't I? You didn't tell me what happened last night. How didn't but, I just tell you what happened? But now you've handcuffed me, and I can't talk to you because you've asked for an attorney. Right. So, okay, that's fine. But I will tell you right now, you're still on a hold for a robbery. I know. I don't know why I need a fucking lawyer, because uh, obviously I didn't do nothing. And obviously you guys know I didn't do nothing, because I've been arrested for the same bullshit before, and you guys don't interview me this much, so... Wham bam, thank you for the coke. Put me back in the cell. What's that? Just fuck it. Alright. I know we did this twice, but I gotta do it again every time, okay? Before I ask you any questions, I gotta read your rights. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and sign there. I'm gonna take your gaff off. Look, I'm not signing nothing. I don't want to okay, sign you don't have to sign anything. You understand your rights though, right? Yeah. That's all I need is verbal yes? Yeah. Yeah. So when's this coat going to be here? Or is that just a fairy tale? It, it's coming. He's getting there right now. He'll be here in about two minutes. He has to watch the sorting machine. Uh, it tastes good. Mm-hmm. Mm. I have enough evidence like what? of the armed robbery, okay? But, you know, if, if you're saying you didn't do it, you need to give me your side of the story. I didn't do it. Okay, well, give me your side of the story. You got to I mean, convince me because I got a lot of evidence. I got a lot of physical evidence. Well, like what? Name the well, I don't need to, I, why should I tell you that? I mean, you haven't been you haven't been helpful to me at all. And you don't, because I don't believe that you got any evidence. The, no. there, there's only a couple pieces of evidence I'm missing. Name them. What's that? Name them. Well, why? Why would you do that? <clears throat> you haven't helped me out at all. You give me a little bit, I give you a little bit. We go back and forth. I give you one of my pieces of evidence, now give me a little something. You know, I know anything I say here can and will be used against me. Sure, but anything you say here, I can also tell your your, your parole officer that what? you helped me out. That doesn't mean dick. There's no way. I didn't do it. There's no way. How drunk were you? Were you drunk? No, I was pretty sober. So you're in your right mind. You remember everything about the night, right? Yeah. So you couldn't have done something not remembered. You couldn't have gone and robbed the place and not remembered? Fuck, no. Okay, so you would remember if you robbed the place. Yeah. So I'm willing to go to the prosecutor, I'm willing to go to the parole officer and say, this guy's a good guy, he helped me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. I know you don't want to go back to jail, right? Back to prison? Well, fuck, it looks like I am if, if and you're going to charge me with some bogus shit. You guys don't, I mean, what, what do you got, really, that I, I was... At a buddy's house, and I happened to come outside because you guys were fucking swarming the area, and they which fucking. Door, which door did you come out of? I came out of the uh, front door. You know what? I'm not saying that, man. I'm done, man. Fuck this. The only reason I came up here is to get a fucking coke. Okay. You're not getting out. Oh no, I can't finish it. Finish it. Make it quick. I got things to do. Butterfinger, you promise? I didn't promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
like I said, you ever helped me out at all, why should I help you out? I got you a soda. That's good enough. Jeff was released from custody just under 12 hours later. And that takes us to the final and perhaps the most important component of an anti-hero, the conclusion. Which unfortunately in this particular case is unknown. The final outcome of this story will vary depending on the source. Some with a happy ending, others a cautionary tale. One legend has it that Jeff got clean soon after his release and now works in the corporate marketing team for Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. While another states that he was picked up the day after for the same charge and is now facing down a 15-year sentence in Georgia State Prison. If we go by the Hollywood formula, an anti-hero's actions throughout the course of their life are so drastic and single-minded that they only ever lead to salvation or destruction, and their final decision is always dictated by what they have learned and how they have changed throughout the course of the story. The paradox here is that we don't even need the theme of imprisonment to mold the outcome of this particular story, as the theme of addiction is more than enough. Whether he goes to prison or not, Jeff will either manage to get clean and rebuild his life, or he won't. He is headed for salvation or destruction no matter what. And that single concept can perhaps define Jeff as an anti-hero. His outcome is a mystery, but either way it goes, it most certainly conforms to the anti-hero's ending. Hmm. Santa! Yeah? <coughs> You're bringing my present early? No. But I never told you what I wanted. I said I didn't bring it, dipshit. Okay, good. I want a stuffed elephant. A pink one. Well, wish in one hand, ship in the other one, see which one fills up first. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good movie, that. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe you've not seen it. No, no. What's it called? Bad Santa? Yeah. yeah. But The Legend of Jeff, I think Jeff's, uh, he was a good analogy there of the uh, anti hero villain thing, wasn't yeah. it? I like that. I like the way he breaks it down like that. But it's. For me, he was funny. Yeah, he was saying a lot of funny shit mm. that just made you laugh. And that's the you know? thing is that you know he might be a bad guy, but he's he's human. Yeah. No, I think he's a good guy, and he's now clean. And he works at Coca Cola. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the coke. <laughs> Did he come? I only came down here for a coke. Where's that bottle <laughs> finger? <laughs> yeah, good, good. I like that. I enjoyed yeah. that. Good channel as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.